Hello and welcome to another edition of the Stench of Truth. Um, I just want to comment very quickly on uh, something uh, I guess I'm pretty excited about. I posted a couple of my short stories. They are, they are published now on Amazon Kindle via the Kindle self-publishing feature. Um, uh, first thing I want to do is apologize for the uh, price. I can't set them any lower for some reason. Maybe I'll be able to edit that in the future. But if anybody's interested in um, historical Lovecraftian pastiche work, um, horror fiction in other words, um, I'll encourage you to check them out and I'll put links in the description box here. So I'm kind of excited about it. You know, I don't know whether they're any good or not, but if you do happen to um, download a copy and read them, I would certainly uh, encourage you to leave uh, feedback and or reviews at Amazon. If you like them, if you don't like them, whatever, uh, that would be great. Um, um, I'm excited because I didn't know what to expect, you know, trying out the self-publishing thing. So, uh, as I said, there are two stories. Uh, one is called The Secret Name of God, and the other is called On the Order and the Foundation. And uh, both of them have now been published on Kindle. And I'll put links to the stories in the description box for this video. Now, um, so please... Uh, if you're interested, check them out if you like historical uh, Lovecraftian pastiche horror fiction. Uh, I'm kind of proud of them. I think they're two of the better stories that I've written over the years. So uh, hopefully, you know, some of you will find them uh, enjoyable reads. So anyway, enough for that. Uh, you'll notice that Window Cat is present. So that means we have a show to do. Um, I apologize, it's been uh, almost a week since I've done a video here. Uh, I've been very busy. I traveled to the Kecksburg UFO Festival and found it very fascinating to listen to not only Stan Gordon give his presentation on Kecksburg and on more recent UFO and Bigfoot sightings in Pennsylvania, but also a gentleman from the Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society. And uh, that was a very enjoyable day. Um, but I do want to make some comments on some things that have been in the news. Obviously, the Olympics are a very big issue right now. And the spectacle and unreality of the entire opening cer uh, ceremonies of the Games and all of the other accoutrements that go along with this make this a total mockery of what the Olympics was, was supposed to be about. If you look into the past and you see that uh, this was supposed to be a competition between athletes from other countries in order to showcase the best and brightest and also to uh, be a, I guess, uh, a statement about the greatness of human potential because athletes can and often do transcend uh, the limits of, of human ability in some regards setting world records, being the fastest, etc., have now become nothing but the same kind of drivel that you see everywhere. And I'm not a big fan of sports anyway, but when you see the kind of ridiculous displays that are put on in the opening ceremonies and all of the other functions that are going along with the Olympics, you have to say to yourself, what is this? Does this even have anything to do with the triumph of uh, human potential? It doesn't. It's nothing but a fucking show. And, and, it's, and it's a gaudy, disgusting show to boot. And if any of you watch this stuff with even the slightest bit of a notion about what the Olympics history is and what it's supposed to represent, then you should know that what they're presenting to you is nothing but swill with all of this n nonsensical symbolism and ridiculous routines and all this kind of stuff, which is it has turned it into a spectacle. Which brings me back to 
what we've talked about before many different times, and that is about the spectacle of today, where everything is turned into a joke of its former self, where everything is bred in circuses, where everything that is given to us is designed to divert us, to make our eyes turn away from the very real problems that face us every day. And one of the big issues that is facing us right now is a continuous downward economic spiral. With the European Union hanging on the edge of a cliff and the United States ready to fall right behind them in an economic crisis that will plunge us back into the deepest depths of a horrific economic calamity which is about to fall, while no one, no one is proposing any kind of solutions to this. All we see is the same kind of political pandering and fake right-left demagoguery surrounding these issues, and you have one of the presidential camp, uh, candidates traveling around the world trying to set up an image of himself as being someone of import who continuously sticks his foot in his mouth and this is why of course <laughs> he takes absolutely no stand on any issue whatsoever except for his absolute unswavering support for the state of Israel even though Israel is of course a terrorist state by any definition for its treatment of the Palestinians and for its unwarranted assault and war against Lebanon and other nation states and peoples since its inception. Starting with terrorist gangs all the way up to the terrorist actions of the IDF. So one should not be surprised I suppose this is something that all candidates seem to do and it's something that I and no one else should be able to understand on the basis of pure politics and on the basis of being the leader of a major world power that we are supposedly uh, here in the United States because isn't it about diplomacy but of course, that is what happens in the real world. In the bizarro world of today, we praise radical nation states like Israel who randomly attack and white phosphorus bomb people and who engage in terrorist activities as long as it supports some nefarious behind the scenes agenda. So, the one thing you can count on Romney and Obama both doing is kowtowing to Israel. And when it comes to Romney, that's about the only issue he will be absolutely firm about. Because he's going to be elected, if he is elected, he's going to be elected on having no issues at all. Taking no stand on anything. Because he is the master chimera. And Obama, of course, is going to continue to try and portray himself as the champion of the people. Trying to, I guess, suck at the teat of his 2008 campaign, which I need not remind anybody, was a complete 180 degrees from his actual governing for his first term in office. Where he stabbed in the back everybody who supported him, as I predicted. And he will continue to do so in his second term if he wins it. And the second term of an Obama administration, you are guaranteed to see exactly what I have predicted from the very beginning. And that is the complete and utter gutting of our federal social safety net programs and that includes Social Security, Medicare and everything else. And for those of you who think the individual mandate under the uh, Affordable Care Act is something that is onerous and 
um, decrepit, which I do, of course. Uh, do not be surprised whenever your Social Security and your Medicare benefits and Medicaid to the states and all of these other things now come into play and now will be assaulted full on because here you will have a lame duck president who will finally reveal and go full hog for his agenda while all he did during his first term was twiddle his thumbs as people were laid waste, thrown out of their homes, thrown out of their jobs, had industry removed, had money, had capital, had everything offshored out of this country so that this country could be laid absolutely waste. And what would you have with a Romney administration? Pretty much the same thing, but a little more stealthily because it will be his first term in office. And of course, everybody who gets elected to office, the only thing they really care about is getting elected again. And the only way they can do that is by getting money from who? Wall Street, bankers, giant finance firms, and corporations. Because they are the real owners of this country. So that is what you have to expect in this race. And that is why I have said before and I will say again, do not vote or vote no confidence in every category when it comes time to vote in November. You cannot participate in a system in reality by voting for the lesser devil because I'm tired of the lesser devil. I want an actual person. I want someone who's actually going to do something that is going to benefit families, people in this country or should I say, in this corporation state that we have. And you're just never going to find that. It's not going to happen. And that's the sad reality of Bizarro World, where we now reside. Thank you. Good day.